Appreciate you taking time to join us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, coming to you from our outstanding studios that First Star Logistics provides for us, and we are greatly appreciative of that. And we're also greatly appreciative of our guest, Dan Pitcher, new offensive coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals, but he's been on the staff, worked his way up. Um, he's He did it the right way. There's no question about it, and everybody's excited about what Dan Pitcher brings to the table, and he talks about what his expectations are for the offense on a position by position group. We cover covered all with them. We cover a lot of coaching philosophy with them, installation philosophy with them. Um, training camp coming upon us quickly. Dan Pitcher's more than ready. I think the Cincinnati Bengals will be as well. I think you're going to like it. Really appreciate you joining us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, in our outstanding brand new studio, spanking brand new and uh, new building, new studio. But we got some guests that you're very familiar with and that you've asked to bring back. And this guy is no exception to that rule. One of the most popular guests that we have. Offensive coordinator, the Cincinnati Bengals, Dan Pitcher. And you know, after a brilliant career at Cortland as a quarterback, you coached there, coached wide receivers in 2012. Here it is, 2024, and you are now, in a matter of 12 years, 13th year coming up here, offensive coordinator in the National Football League. That's a meteoric rise, coach, and well-deserved. I think you're one of the brightest offensive minds in, in the game. Are you – does it surprise even you the with the uh, – how rapidly you rose in the ranks? Well, first of all, it's awful nice of you to say that, Lap. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, it's been fun. Um, if you asked me 12 years ago, you know, where did I think I would be? I've just learned so much along the way. You know, I, I think I think I've always had confidence in myself, and I always, um, you know, was ambitious and, and and wanted to get to the highest level and and then perform well you know, once I was there, um, right. you know, right. I think what I've learned probably along the way is, uh, you know, all the things that I, I didn't know, I didn't know, you know, and, and maybe, you know, just how hard it is in some aspects, but then also just how not simple, but you know, it's, it's about working hard, putting the work in, treating people the right way, um, and staying true to, to yourself and what you believe in. And so, um, I'm fortunate to be where I'm at. It's, I've had countless people help me along the way, and um, I'm excited to be sitting here in this chair talking to you. Well, hopefully, and it's about to start. It's about to get crazy again, as, as we all know. Uh, but I, I know you did get some some downtime, and hopefully you went east with your wife, Marissa, and your son, Oliver. Did you have some good uh, family time and time with friends? Yeah, today? yeah, it was, it was, it was a good, uh, good little break. We got back to, to see family and friends. Uh, we're both East Coast people. She's from Jersey. I'm from Central New York, and so yeah. um, we got up there and uh, enjoyed some family time, and got back to Cincinnati and getting settled in and and, and ready to go. So it's it's definitely you got to take advantage of it when you get it, and go go visit those people that you know are so instrumental in in your development as a young child, and um, you know who gave you the love and support to to get to where you are today. So um, I was able to do that. We were able to do that as a family, and, and I'm grateful for that. I know I've asked you before, uh, but during that downtime, you try to totally get away from the game or are you on the Jersey shore and the beach, you know, drawing up X's and O's uh, in, the, in the, let the tide wash it away. <laughs> um, I, I would say there's probably a couple weeks of totally getting away. Yeah. Um, but then over the second half of the break, it starts to kind of, you get antsy a little bit, you know, it's when you do this job, a lot of guys, I think, you, if it's not only your job, it's also your hobby because you love to do it. And so, you know, for me, it, it's interesting. I, I enjoy it. Um, you know, so it's not like I'm, um, you know, uh, burning the midnight oil, you know, doing crazy, you know, volume of work that I would be potentially doing during the season. But, um, you know, I, I do over the last, you know, last week or so, I've started to kind of chip away at some stuff that I know will be helpful for us through training camp and, and for myself too during the season. So, 
it's not it's maybe a complete shut off for a little bit of time and then uh as we get closer and closer to coming back i start to maybe ease my way back into it so before training camp starts as a coaching staff how many days do you actually have already planned out you know with what you're going to try to get done that specific day from an itinerary you know and it's always going to be a little bit of flexibility in there but uh how many days out are you like all right, I want to cover this aspect of uh, installation. Here we go on a day-to-day -day basis. How far out do you go? Um, I mean, I, I think it's it's pretty well chunked out. What we try to do is is uh, design the installation so that we really kind of go through it three times. You, you go through it once during, you know, really phase two with the players in the spring. You go right. back through it again during OTAs and mandatory mini camps. So that kind of got you two full cycles through what really is what we kind of block off into about 10 or 11 chunks of, of inf you know, plays and information. And so then you kind of go back through that one more time in training camp. And so, I, you know, the broad outline and, and, and Zach and, and Doug Rosfeld, who, uh, you know, who's, who's right there, Zach's right-hand man, kind of helping them through that that whole scheduling process. They do such a good job of laying right. out the schedule. And, you know, so I would say, you know, we have a, a good sense for what all of training camp is going to look like uh -huh. from a day-to-day -day schedule. And then probably the first couple of weeks in terms of schematically, what a big, you know, broad picture of what we're going to put in. And then we always try to stay two or three days ahead of time with regard to the specific scripting of practice. So the, you know, the exact plays we're going to run from the exact formations and motions and things like that. So there are different levels that go to it, um, but it's all very organized process. And, and I think we do a good job of it. we talked about the uh, continuity aspect of it um, with respect to the coach staff. Brian Callahan gets the head coaching opportunity uh, with Tennessee. Boom, you slide right in. Everybody just slides over, you know, slides up or over, however you want to describe it, a spot to fill fill coaching positions. Same guys that you all have worked together with, though. That continuity aspect of it, how beneficial is it when you're doing what you're doing now, getting ready and laying all the plans out for training camp? I mean, everybody has done it before together. Everybody's on the same page. Is it that much easier? It, it, there's, It's definitely easier. Um, you know, I think it just allows you to – when you're growing with each other and, and, and in year one and year two and year three, you know, you're still, you're making mistakes. You're not that we don't make mistakes. Now we make a mistake every day. You walk in here, sure, um, sure. but, but it's, it's a lot easier to avoid those things. And, and maybe, you know, things that, you know, that are just kind of understood, um, you know, that, that maybe in the past you've had to take a lot of time to kind of lay out and, okay, this, we're going to do this. Here's why. Right. You know, when you've been together for a while that, that you don't necessarily have to do that. And so now you just become more efficient. You can take that time and you can gear it towards things that, you know, are going to, you know, help you be in a position to win football games in the fall, maybe rather than, you know, just some of the the lower level nitty gritty of what kind of gets you through the day. Um, so, yes, it is a benefit. It was a long winded answer to your question, but it no, ab ab no, absolutely. Uh, well answered. So when you're when you're putting together the off season, OK, let's tweak this. Uh, don't really like the how that the results we got out of that. Let's move that. Put this in. How much is brand new? How much of it is going back even a couple of years? OK, let's resurrect this with this group of guys we've got now. This might work pretty well. How much of how much of, of the puzzle is new? How much of it is old? What, what kind of a mix is there there? Um, there's a mix of both, I, you know, I would say like in terms of like brand new, oh my God, this is something we've never seen or done before. I think there's, there's not very, there's hardly any of that, Right. not none of that, but what I think you see are like variations on things that you've done and, and maybe, uh, maybe you dipped your toe in this kind of area of this scheme and you had some good success, but it wasn't a big sample. And so it's like, all right, well, let's invest more time in that, you know, and, and now the, the early returns are good. Now we got to spend more time on it. So we know if this is something we want to do a lot of, and what are the problems that we're going to have to solve if we want to live in this world. Um, so I think it's just like a lot of variations off of things that you've maybe done in the past. And, and some of it is, there's no change at all. It's, it's a, just a recommitment to, we do this the right way. Let's do more of it. 
let's emphasize how important it is to us and and let's just keep any momentum that we have in it rolling and then there are things like you reference where hey you know hey back in whatever maybe maybe three years ago we we did more of this why you know what are the reasons why do we stop yeah. you know were they good reasons uh pro- most of the time they are sometimes things just kind of fall by the wayside and you look back and you wonder, well, why was that? You know, this was good for us. Maybe there were maybe one bad thing happened and it left a sour taste in everyone's mouth. But then when you, when you get, get away from that, you look back and say, well, this is, this really was good. Right. Um, you know, so there's elements of all those things uh, and you just try to find the right mix. And when you get a new running back, a new tight end, a new receiver in the draft, um, you know, a couple of the running back and tight end and free agency receiver in the draft, you know, sometimes some of those things that you did a few years ago, oh, boy, it fits their skill set a little bit better than what we had at the time, right? I mean, it's like, let's resurrect that because, boy, this is perfect for these guys. Yeah, yeah, I think, and I would even go a step further to say, like, it all starts with the guys, right? you know, and, and yes, we have our scheme, and yes, we have our system, and it's one that we believe in, and I think it's well-constructed and intelligently constructed, but there's still people that have to go out and make it work within that system. And so I think anybody, and, and I, I would think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody in the NFL that would tell you any different, like it's, it's player and people centric. Yep. And yeah, you're trying to find those guys to do the things you want to do. But once you have your team, now it just becomes about that team and it becomes right. all about those people. And how do we how do we get them to have the kind of success that's going to allow us to win games? And so, absolutely, maybe you rediscover stuff from the past. Maybe you borrow something that other teams are doing in the league. Maybe you reinvest in something that's been central to your to your uh, attack, you know, for the last couple of years. But um, all those things come into play. Yeah, there's there's nothing worse than as a, as a player realizing that man, this coach is so rigid and so stubborn. I mean, there's his system and it's not fitting what we do. They're trying to put a square peg in a round hole here. Why can't we just do things that, you know, that we're capable of doing? And you guys are so good with that. And then, like you say, Coach, I mean, the NFL understands that they're freaks, man, <laughs> athletically, you know, and, and find out what they can do best and and adapt accordingly. But, um, it, you know, it's it's easier said than done a lot of times. Um, so it's, it's, it's a process there for sure. I think with the continuity of your coaching staff, And then of key players, you know, quarterback, um, some of the offensive linemen, some of the defensive players. I mean, there's there's a lot of continuity uh, on on levels in on the coaching staff and levels from a player standpoint. And I think with that continuity comes like automatic buy in. I mean, we've been together. We've gone through things. We've made adjustments. We've handled adversity and we've handled success. And sometimes handling success can be even more difficult than handling adversity. I think the buy-in with this football team, that's the thing that impresses me. You know, I was watching OTAs and mini camps and stuff. Man, the buy-in is huge. Every single player absolutely trusts and believes in what you guys are doing as a coaching staff. Yeah, I I think you need that. I think the best teams have that. Um, I think that has to be central to what, how you're presenting to the team as a coach and, 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 really you're up there, you're, you're convincing because, you know, and, and I think we do a good job of it. And it's not that we're selling anything that we don't believe in ourselves. It's right. But it's telling, it's, it's communicating why it's, it's giving the background information. It's giving the players a glimpse into maybe why we've decided to go a certain direction. These are, these are really smart guys. These are guys that have played football their whole lives. These are guys that love football. They study the game. And so, I, I believe that you you treat them like that and and maybe 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 there's always going to be a segment of of your team that's maybe more interested in what the process was than maybe there's a segment of guys that really just want to go out there and play just tell me what to run coach and I'm going to run it right. that that's your job but at the end of the day I I think as long as you've done the work and and you've you've um, done it in such a way that you check all the boxes like you should be open and willing to communicate that to the guys because it's going to result in exactly what you said, which is buy-in. And if they have questions, great. Whatever we're doing should be able to stand up to questions or scrutiny or criticism, as long as it's done respectfully and as long as it's done in a way that's only 
trying to move the team forward. So, you know, I, I believe in that. I think that's how we operate here. And I think that's reflected in what you're saying when you when you go out to practice and you feel that from those guys. That's that's the goal. That's what we're trying to 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 earn from them and and what you know, what we expect out of them. But but we, we have to earn it. Um, and so I think we're doing a good job of that. Absolutely. I mean, I, th I think the communication between coaches and players in this organization is as good as I've ever seen. And, I, and I'm, I'm serious. I mean, I've said it many times uh, and I'll say it to anybody. And, and I've, I've experienced that where, you know, as a player, you know, and you think, oh, just trying to understand the game of football. So the line coach says, this is what I want you to do. And I'd ask why. And some coaches would say, because I told you, damn it, that's why. OK. And that, that guy, I still respect him because he's my coach, but I'm like, come on, dude, what the hell? As opposed to a guy, I want you to do this because this, and if this happens, this is what we're going to do. Oh, I get it. I mean, you get, you guys do that so well with your football team, and I, I just think that the lines of communication are so wide open. I, I think that's worth a couple of wins during the course of the season at some point in time. I really do. Well, the other part of it, too, is we, we expect these guys to be problem solvers, to yeah. be able to think on their feet out on the field we don't play and there's only so many problems that we can solve in between series or at halftime of a game or whenever it may be but we 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 need them to be able to to think and solve a problem on their feet maybe in the middle of a drive right before we ever even get a chance to talk to them about it but it, so if they if they understand why if we've if we've communicated clearly enough during the week that we're calling this scheme for this reason because we expect them to do this and all of a sudden they do they react differently and now our angles are different or our, or our leverages are a little bit different if we've given them the tools to be able to make an adjustment before we even talk to them about it like that's that's what can be the difference between winning and losing and they have there's no way you could do that unless you knew why right there's no way you could make that adjustment if we gave that answer of we'll do it just because we told you to do it. right like right okay you could go do it but now as soon as the picture changes okay coach now what do you want me to do well coach is on the sideline coach got he can't tell you for another five minutes you got to figure it out yep and so if we expect them to do that then i think it's incumbent on us to communicate the way that we do and you have such a group of uh, intelligent players on this football team i mean offensively you know it, it starts with the quarterback he has to see everything recognize everything pre-snap post-snap the center, Ted Karras, has to recognize a lot of things, make calls, you know, understand things uh, pre-snap and, and, and go, go proceed accordingly. So, I mean, like you say, they have to, okay, boy, these guys, they did their homework. They, they, got, they got something here we haven't seen. Okay, how do we apply this to our rules or how do we apply this to what we're trying to get done? And like you say, get it figured out because if you've got to go to the sideline after the quarterback gets sacked, it's too late, bro. You know what I mean? It's like you've got to get it figured out somehow. And that's – I remember as a, rook, as a rookie, uh, Bob Johnson, our center, was a very intelligent guy, and he understood football, you know. And, um, and I remember leaning on him. Uh, I, I haven't seen this look. What, what do you think? Well, we, we saw this last year, and here's what we're going to do. Here's the adjustments we're going to make. We're making those kind of adjustments on the field in the huddle, like you're talking about, rather than on the – because you can't go to the sideline, and, and it's, it is. It's, uh, it, it's, it's huge. It's really big. There's no doubt. So what – What's the biggest question, if any, coach, that uh, that you need to get answered as you go into this season? Is there is there any any big question, or are you all are you in in, in a pretty good mindset? And eh, maybe just a couple little questions that I need to see how it unfolds. No, I think listen. I think you go into every training camp and um, hopefully you feel good about where you're at. Like like I know we do. Um, you know that's the goal of really from the day the season ends and to get us to this point is to make the kind of decisions along the way in terms of the people you have in the building and what you're choosing to do that you you're you're anxious to go to camp because you believe you have a great plan and you believe you have the people that can execute it um you know but there's always there's always going to be things that pop up there's always there's room for competition certainly on offense there's room for guys to step up um you know there's there's you know a whole host of players that could play themselves into you know, a, a bigger or smaller role based on, you know, what occurs over the next, you know, six to seven weeks as we lead our way up to the season. So that's always, I think, just what you're looking to see is how do guys respond and, and, you know, no one day, no one practice makes that decision for any player. Yep. It's about consistency. It's about, you know, uh, maintaining an energy level and, a, and an attention to detail 
that lets us know, lets the quarterback know that you're trustworthy, that you're going to make plays day in and day out. And yeah, you're going to have down days. You're going to have great days. It are the things that you can control consistent and can we count on you? And um, so I think there's a bunch of guys that have an opportunity to prove that. I expect that most of them, if not all of them will, and that's going to leave us with hard decisions to make as coaches as, as to how we utilize certain players, but those are decisions you want to be making. Um, and I, I know the character of our guys, and, and I think that they're going to put us in that spot as coaches because we're going to have a really good camp. They're going to play well, and um, it's going to be better for the team because of it. Uh, as a former offensive lineman, I look at the offensive line. I know we've talked about this before, but, you know, as a player, your ultimate goal as an individual and as a team is to not only go to the Super Bowl, win it, you know. And uh, you got players that have gone to the uh, Super Bowl uh, for the offensive lineman, have gone to the Super Bowl, individually gone to the Pro Bowl. I mean, so it's like not only – fellow offensive linemen, but other players on the team, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to let this, uh, I'm going to listen to what these offensive linemen are talking about because they've achieved at the highest level. I mean, they have done what I aspire to do. <laughs> they're, they're, they're world champions. You know, they, they've gone to a Super Bowl, if not a world champion. They're a Pro Bowl player. I mean, I'm going to listen to what these guys say, uh, what they do, how they do it, all that stuff. So I, I, the offensive line. At the quarterback position, you have a guy – that is as focused and competitive and, and plays at a high, as high a level as, as anybody. I mean, if, if I'm at the receiver position, you have great, I mean, th this football team has experienced success, you know, individually and collectively as a football team, that that's all good as you go into a season, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it, it just allows you to a foundation to, to build this year's team on and, it's still all going to be about this this year's team. All those things that have been accomplished in the past, they do have value. They have value for the individual. And then collectively, it gives you something to build on. But unless you do the work to build this year's team, it, it really doesn't matter. Right. Now, right. It, it, but it does matter in the sense that it, it gets you started. And, it, it, and you have guys that have legitimately very, very high expectations for themselves. And they're not – they're not outlandish. They're not things that, you know, a lot of words that get thrown around that everyone says this time of year. Well, we, we have guys that legitimately should expect those things from themselves yeah. because of how they've played in the past. But if we don't make it all come together with this group of guys, it's just going to be, it'll be a disappointment, but we know that they know that like, there's no, it's, it's a, you know, what have you done for me lately? And we intend to do a lot, but we have to go put the work in. Um, and so we're just excited to get started uh, in that process. How do you feel about uh, Joe Burrow? And, you know, obviously he's still he's, – he's cleared to go, obviously. And, and uh, he's changed up his off-season approach. You know, he's going to do some things differently. And I guess that's a question for you. Based on what Joe has decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to do things a little bit differently instead of like – grinding through the same routine that I've, that I've done. I'm, I'm going to change a little bit. What about you as a coach? Do you have um, like a, a set? Uh, this is, this is my, my schedule on a day-to-day -day basis here in the off season. It's work for me. I'm staying with it. Or do you tweak a little bit? How do you handle yourself in that area, coach? I think, I mean, I think uh, I've always been open to modifying how I, how I do things. I think it's kind of an organic process. Like you, as you prepare and you do it time and time and time again, you find yourself gravitating more towards, okay, I, I did this set of things and I, that was really helpful. Or maybe as I reflect, like I've spent a lot of time in the past doing these things. And then at the end of the day, maybe I don't get the return on that investment of time. And so I think you, you just, similar to what I'm sure Joe did is you just have to be able to look, Take a look at yourself um, critically, and and take in any new information you've been able to gather um, over the course of you know the past year, two years, three years, whatever it is, and then try to make smart decisions about moving forward. And then you just continually are going to gather new information based on those decisions. So um, there's things that I know that I need to do for myself to feel ready, and that's 
I've, I've come to realize those things over time. And so I'm always going to have to do those things. How I get there, you know, maybe you experiment and maybe you discover a better way or maybe you, you know, you, you just, you experiment and you decide your old way was the, was the right way all along. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think you just gotta be open to that process. With respect to Joe and handling training camp and getting ready for the season. Um, is it, is it going to be, you know, all right, Joe, I'm, I'm going to monitor you here pretty closely. It's important. We got to make sure that that wrist is right and you're not overdoing it. Uh, do you think Joe is in that mindset? Do you have to kind of police that mindset? What are your expectations there? I think we'll just have great communication from Joe to us as a coaching staff, the training right. staff, the strength staff. We got to work as a team. Um, I think Joe is in a great frame of mind uh, and, and knows that, um, you know, there's things that he has to do to, to get himself ready to play a full season worth of NFL football. And I think we just all have to work together to, to help him achieve that goal. And so, you know, we'll, That'll be we'll take it day to day um, and but we'll make sure that everything we're doing is with that with that goal in mind. So, Gasicki, um, is it fair to say potential Swiss Army knife a little bit? I mean, he can do a lot of things. Is, are you excited to have a chess piece chess piece like Gasicki? Absolutely. You know, Mike, Mike was very impressive this spring, as his tape has been in the league. Um, Impressive as a player, impressive as a person, impressive as a teammate. And so very excited to work with Mike. I think he can do a lot um, and, and he'll be uh, he'll be a really good weapon for us. What about uh, Burton? I know in the past uh, the coaching staff has has really said that the wide receiver position, you guys aren't only exceptional athletes, you're intelligent athletes. We want you to know X, Y, Z. We want you to know flanker, split end, slot. We want you to be interchangeable uh is burton falling into that category and and do you feel like uh you can employ that same sort of dynamic with your wide receiver core yeah jermaine you know jermaine did a great job this spring i think jermaine faced a lot of the challenges that all rookie receivers face uh rookie players not just receivers um but we were happy with how he responded the effort that he put in uh and you know the plays that he made when the ball came his way so uh, it, that's, it's an ongoing process with all of our young players, Jermaine included. Uh, but, you know, we took him because he's a very talented football player. And he showed us this spring that he's a very talented football player. And so we're going to coach the heck out of him. We expect him to continue to keep putting that work in and the chips will fall where they fall. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm very excited to, to keep working with Jermaine and think he has a very bright future. So the uh, national media made a big deal this week about the fact that, um, you know, T. Higgins, the, uh, the time frame for negotiating or, or an extension or whatever off of that franchise tag expired, and he was the only one of nine players where that was the case. It seems to me that T. is in a good space mentally. You feel that way? Yeah, I mean, T., I've never had any question about T. from a mentality standpoint. T.'s proven everything he would need to prove to, to me, and he doesn't, you know, that's not T., – T.'s out there to – to prove to the world what kind of football player he is. But, uh, you know, as far as the coaching staff and myself, I have nothing but respect for T Higgins. I know exactly what I'm going to get from him. I know how much important, I know how important football is to him and, and what, you know, this team means to him. So zero questions on my end with regard to, to T Higgins and, and where he's at. I uh, expect him to have a great season. What about the uh, running back position coach? I mean, Joe Mixon has been a staple, you know, for, for a lot of years, Tyler Boyd, obviously, slot receivers. Well, they they both have moved on to other opportunities with other franchises. We talked about receivers a little bit. What about the running back position? How do you feel about that spot? I feel really good. I think we got a good mix of guys that um, have different elements of their skill set that are complementary to one another. I think it's a strong room from a character and a, uh, a work ethic standpoint. I think you, you just see that when you, you know, we look at a guy like Chase Brown and the improvements that he's made in, in, in a short time, you see that, you know, with Zach Moss and, and what, you know, he's been able to accomplish at different stops and just how he, how he goes about being a pro day to day to day, how he integrated himself into the offense and into the team this spring. Um, and then, you know, the other guys as well, Travion and, and, and Chris and, and the young guys that we have in that room. So, 
Uh, I think it's a strong room. I think they're complementary players to one another. I think they they know what's expected of them in the offense, and I expect them to play well. So the division, the AFC North, every team had a winning record last year. First time in, what, 48, 58 years, whatever the heck it was. It was a long time, I know, almost around a half a century, let's put it that way, that all four, uh, all teams in a division had a winning record. Well, Hard Knock said, yeah. We're going to come knocking on the AFC North door. You know, I mean, we're, we're going to down the stretch of the regular season and into the playoffs. We're going to, we're going to cover every, all four of the AFC North teams. What's your feeling on that coach? That, that falls in the category of things I have no control over. So if I spend any time worrying about it or being upset about it, then I'm wasting time. Um, so it, uh, they'll be here when they get here and, uh, we're going to do our jobs uh, like they're not here. And, and at the end of the day, it's going to be a critical part in the season. We're going to be chasing our goals. Um, and so, you know, whether there's cameras here or not, really doesn't matter. Um, we'll just be coming to work and doing our jobs. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know um, from a team goal standpoint where this one falls, but I'm sure it's going to be addressed. I mean, it, it's, Put yourself a little bit behind the eight ball with slow starts here in, in the last few seasons. How how important? Where does getting off to a, a good start? Where does that rank as a goal for the football team? I think starting fast in the season, starting fast in individual games, starting fast when we go out to practice will be uh, an emphasis with this group um, because I think it's it's a, it, it fits an attacking mindset, it fits an aggressive mindset, it fits who we want to be as a team. Um, and so we're always going to focus on starting fast and, and making sure that we put our best foot forward from the time they blow that first whistle. During training camp, you have workouts with uh, opponents going to Chicago, um, travel up there on Wednesday, have a workout on Thursday against against the Bears, the final preseason game against the Colts, have a workout you know, against the Indianapolis Colts. And – in, in today's National Football League, with the limited time that a lot of veterans get during preseason games, how important are those workouts? I think they're great. I, I mean, I think they're um, they're very useful. You get to a point in training camp where it becomes very monotonous and you're going against your defense and it feels like you're having to solve all these issues every day because we have a very good defense and we have a challenging defensive scheme and we have good defensive players. and. Uh, there comes a point where it's just refreshing for everyone to look across and there's somebody different and you don't, you're not sure what you're going to get from them. Uh, so you have to think on your feet, you have to solve problems. Um, it, it gives you a good measuring stick, um, to, to where you are against, you know, other league wide competition. Um, and, and sometimes that can be eye opening uh, in, in good and, and bad way, bad ways. And, and you, you hope it's good ways, but it's always good to get that. Um, and so I think they're useful uh, practices. And, and I think the two that we have this this summer will prove to, to be very helpful to us. I agree. I, I, I always admire um, the intensity, um, the, the level of competition. You know, just they all rise, you know, when you're going against, like you said, somebody that you haven't been going against and and you uh, you fall into, I don't know, you can fall into bad habits, really, you know, as, as like as an offensive lineman, I get this guy's pass rush moves down pat. I know what his best pass rush move is. Take that away, make him use something that's maybe not quite as effective. Now you're going against people that you haven't been going against for a little bit, and and now it's it's more game like as such. Uh, and and I, I I think that I think that uh, over the last few years, those workouts against other teams have been monumentally beneficial for you. Would you agree? Yeah, for sure. I think I think you know we we organizationally we've we've acknowledged that, and so I think it's uh, it's helpful in, in having two of them this year. I'm excited about. So excited to have the uh, the rookies uh, and, and selected veteran players on hand here pretty soon, Coach. It's starting up right away here. Yep. Yeah, it'll be uh, Saturday. They report, and uh, Sunday we'll be out on the field with that with that early group of, of rookies and. Uh, a few of the vets, like you said. So just be, it'll be good to see everybody and um, you know, everyone should be energized and rested and, and ready to go. So it's uh, it's an exciting time of year and uh, we're really looking forward to it.
you know, the, the installation process, uh, um, all the players that I talk to, they're just so impressed with, I mean, coaches are teachers and they're so impressed with how you guys introduce everything to everybody. Uh, even the guys that have been through it. And I remember, you know, it's like you get into your eighth, ninth, 10th year. It's like, okay, kind of know it unless you have a new coaching staff or whatever the case may be. But it seems like the, you, you coaches always find another way to make it interesting to, uh, to present it, to introduce it. I mean, it's a, it's a heck of a talent, no question. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the goal. You know, you're, you, you, you want to make every opportunity you have in front of the team valuable. You want to communicate something that is going to help get you closer to your goal. Um, and so you have to find inventive ways to do that. And I think we have a, a staff full of coaches that are, are comfortable in front of the room, that are strong communicators, that are confident uh, and, and know how to, to, you know, really communicate a message. And, and I'm glad that, you know, that the guys feel that way. Um, and uh, I think we'll, we'll keep continue along that road here in training camp and, and moving forward. Coach, can't thank you enough for your time. I know that uh, your time is valuable as you, as the clock ticks here to the beginning of a training camp. I know you got a lot of things to do and carving time to do something with us is, is greatly appreciated. And I really look forward to year one uh, under Dan Pitcher's offensive coordinator abilities. I think you're going to knock it out of the park, coach. I'm excited for you, man. I appreciate it, Lap. That's the plan. And uh, we're ready to go. Thanks for your time as always. Yeah, man. We'll see you soon. All righty. Dave Lappin here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.